Good morning, church. It is indeed a lovely day. Happy birthday, um, happy anniversary, um, you name it, because today is the first Sunday in Advent. It is our Sunday when we begin the Christian year. Um, and we begin that Christian year to prepare um, over the course of the next four weeks for the um, coming of Christ. And we begin um, so that we might um, settle into life as we know it throughout the cycle of the Christian year. We start with a new theme this year, um, and it is about making room at the inn for housing the holy. Um, and you'll hear lots of play and metaphor about making room at the inn. And whether the inn is our building or the inn is our heart, um, we are housing the holy in those places. And so one of the things that happens um, at Advent is that we have an opportunity to um, bring more light into the world because day by day by day, the days are getting shorter now. Um, and so it is that um, we light Advent candles. And I'm going to slip this off so I can, um, so you can hear me better. Um, but there we go. Sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention. We're going to light Advent candles. We have um, beautiful uh, singing for that to happen, um, and we're going to we're going to uh, yes that. So let those Griffiths come right on in, because uh, we we were about to punt, um, and now we're going to punt again. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Okay, so when um, uh, those two young Griffiths get here, they're going to come and light these two candles. I better move my big box so they can get to them. They're going to light these two candles. Um, that's the one th grand thing about Advent is, whoopee, we get to um, do it by the seat of our pants some days. Um, so I'm going to get off and uh, let Nancy... Thank you, Nancy, for being with us today. Um, sing. Hope waits for us to trust. Hope waits for our commitment to a land that's kind and just in this time of preparation for the work of co-creation for the birthing of a world that heals the ones in pain hope is born yeah. in yeah. us I again i'm gonna need you though to light a purple candle here in a moment sit here. Now, I'm going to need you. So you're going to come right here. You're going to sit here. You have totally rocked this deer. Thank you. So I'm going to have other...
Day of Advent is one of those where once the template gets set, um, it works much more smoothly. But um, I would invite you, my friends, um, to uh, stand as we watch the light of Christ um, jump off of the uh, altar and on to the Advent wreath. Um, and so, Tisha, would you lead us? Uh, would, you, would you read for us? And I think you have young helpers today to read as well. Yes. Can, okay, great. Everyone can hear me. And that, <clears throat> that template's a little rough-edged because we just came in from out of town. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. And we are ready, and we're excited to be here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to participate and and to share in the first advent with all of you. Right. Tisha, your words are going to be right up there if that, if that works for okay, you. Okay, wonderful. The pandemic has laid bare economic and emotional difficulties. As we enter the advent season, how can we ourselves become a house where the holy will be born anew, offering respite, sustenance, and care opening the doors ever wider to those seeking shelter from the onslaught of life. No one person can do it all, but each can do something to make someone's life better one day at a time. No, no, you're good, you're good. Hope waits for us at Avenue. Hope waits for us to trust. Hope waits for our commitment. Hope waits for our commitment. To a man that's kind and just. In this time of preparation, in this time of preparation for the work of co-creation, for the birthing of a world that heals the ones in pain, hope is born in us again. And Sophia, if you would um, light um, that purple candle that's closest to you there, you'll need to get the light off of the altar and light that purple candle that's um, there in the back. Thank you. Either one, either one works. That'll make next week easier, so you've done a good job. Okay, so you can let the light out, perfect. And then Tisha, if you wanna continue um, with the last part of the reading, that would be great. Today I offer the light of hope to illuminate the door of welcome. May this light shine in our heart, in our life, and in our community. May hope awaken us to the possibilities and lead to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. Amen. And as long as I've got kids here, let's do some kids time. <laughs> And you all may be seated. So we're going to, you guys have shown me how well you can um, read and do um, and speak in big voices. And so we're going to start our time for kids time today with um, a little bit of call and response in the same way that we do a call to worship. But you have, your part's going to be the same every time and it's going to be we make room for jesus so can i hear you guys say that together i'm going to go one two three and then you're going to say it one two three we make room for jesus excellent you know your whole part so i'm going to read from some up there and then i'm going to look over at you and you're going to say we make room for jesus make room for family make room for friends yeah, all of you out there, you can help them along too. I'm hoping you're making room for Jesus this season as well. 
Make room for love that never ends. Make room for others who need a hand. Make room to listen, to understand. And oh, here's the big one all at once. Amen. Well, hello there. I'm glad you two stopped by. Come on up. Oh, and look, and Everly's here too. Oh my goodness, let me see. You guys can't see it, but Eric's lost a tooth, and he's got a new one growing in. New life abounds during Advent. Hi, Everly. It's good to see you, sweetheart. Okay, so I wanted to, I'm glad you guys stopped by because I've got this big, well, we'll see what it is. You'll know. What do you think, what do you think I've got there? Christmas decorations. Oh, I was hoping it was a puppy. Couldn't it be a puppy? Wouldn't that be fun if it was a puppy? What do you think's in there? Okay, but it's just a box. Oh my gosh, what can we do with our box here? I'm going to add that back to you. So, should we look? Should we peek in? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's peek in. Oops. Let's go back. Da 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 da. To get, oh, never mind. There we go. Okay, here we go. <gasps> oh, oh, say it again louder. Nothing. Nothing. Oh my gosh. Oh, my heart hurts. There was no puppy. There was nothing. But you know, you guys have great imaginations. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to imagine what might happen in the box. For instance, it could be a pirate ship. Ahoy, mates! Or, let's see, what else could it be? It could be, oh my gosh, I just don't know. What are you? A turtle shell! Oh, I like it! I like it! All sorts of things that our box, what? A burrow. Oh my gosh, a home for the holy. What do you know? A burrow where little animals could be. And you know, the other thing that this box could hold, because it's hard to draw a picture of it, is hope. Hope is something that we wait for at Christmas. We keep on hoping that something fabulous will happen. And Christmas is coming. Jesus is coming. We hope while we wait. So could you stick that little, could you stick that sign of hope right into our box so that we have it for next week? Oh, here. Oh, there it does. It just barely fits. So the other thing that happens when we hope or a sign of our hope is sometimes light. If I'm in a dark room, it can be scary, and I hope I can find a way out. One of the ways that we can hope is with stars, because the stars light up at night in the sky. Yeah, and we can hope and we can know that tomorrow there will be a bright day. So my friends, thank you for coming to Kids Time. Thank you for helping to bring a little light and hope into the world. You may keep the stars. You absolutely may keep the stars. Um, we'll probably find, uh, I've got some more and we'll get them put up on the tree. Um, or if you'd like, I'll give you some more and you could go put them on the tree right now. Yes, depending on the star, huh? Okay. God of grace, thank you for these wise young ones. Thank you for their love and thank you for bringing them into our life to bring more hope to your world. Amen.
you can um, either stop by and put your star on the tree, and I promise I have more, or you can go on and hang out in the nursery with Jill today. Thank you so much, my young friends. Have a great day. Oh, that's an excellent idea to come and get your microphone, David, because you have rightfully guessed that the next thing that we're going to do, um, oh, is we are going to remind people to make room for hope, make room for hope. Jesus is coming. Make room for hope. And thanks to the kids for bringing us hope. So when we gather together, no matter what the season, it's always a time for us to pray. Um, David's going to be helping me today um, with prayers as he um, sings and as I bring the word prayers to you. Make of my heart a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts to honesty before God about what we've done and left undone that created less hope in a hurting world. Let us breathe out this regret and breathe in the life-giving, forgiving spirit of God and out again with the peace of Christ. Make of my life a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our lives to the call of the Spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear and breathe in the courage of the Spirit of God and out again with the peace of Christ. Make of our church a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts, filling it with compassion for all those who are struggling. We remember and pray for, and I invite you to lift these folks in your hearts and minds. Those who are suffering economic hardship and the insecurity in basic needs, may abundance be shared. Those who are suffering mentally, finding it difficult to cope with the many paths that open, let paths open and hope return. We pray for those who are suffering illness or injury. May healing abound. For those who are suffering loneliness and isolation, may companionship and solace arrive. For those who are suffering discrimination, fear, and violence, may they know respect, respite, and safety. (sighs) 
May the advent of compassion be born in us. Reside within us. Move outward from us to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy. That is in each and every child of God. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray using words like this. Please share them with me aloud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. David, would you come and um, read to us um, a lesson from the Hebrew prophets? We'll be focusing on the prophets this Advent season. The reading from the prophets this morning is from Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill my gracious promise with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous branch from David's line who will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is what he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. I'm going to invite you to go right ahead and bring us um, also, except we're not going to stand for this one. I didn't move my slide. Bring us the word from the Hebrew Psalms. This is from Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5. Make Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. So I'm going to need a little bit of um, help at this screen. So my friends, we have made it to the first day of the year. We have made it to Advent. We usually... um, did I move? Did I? Let's let's go back. Here we go. <laughs> Today is the first Sunday in Advent. It's the Little Lent. You might note that the color for the Christian season um, of Lent is purple, just like the season. The, se- the color for Advent is purple, just like the season of Lent before Easter. And yes, the two words do sound alike. This year, our scriptural focus will be on the prophets. The prophets were all about the well-being of the community. And the law was considered God's gift to help us form community. Therefore, the prophets built their whole idea of what living together should look like from this understanding of the law. Advent is the season of the liturgical year observed in most Christian denominations as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for both the celebration um, of the nativity of Christ at Christmas, the birth, and the return of Christ, the second coming. Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year in Western Christianity, and it's part of the wider Christmas and holiday season. But not everybody celebrates Advent just as we do. We usually associate fasting with Lent, but the Eastern Church observes a nativity fast in preparation for the birth of Christ, 
Understanding fasting as a way to make room, make more room for the holy and to shift our focus to the care of neighbor. In a time when so many are suffering economic consequences of the pandemic, we are invited this year to create room for more hope in the world as we learn to reallocate and multiply resources in ways that are just and right. This makes me think about um, two things that crowd my ability to have more hope in my life. Despair and disdain crowd hope right out. Can I let go of these thoughts that lean um, towards darkness? And can I hold on and lean in in a different direction to make more room for what Christ's presence invites? Christ invites hope and compassion. As every day gets darker, it's a good time for us to have this balance of penitence and expectations. To recognize that we need to change inside as the world is changing outside. Penitence means both to be sorry and to look inward. Because often when we look inward, we realize that there are things we should be sorry for. Ways we may have hurt others. Ways we may have hurt ourselves. And to do penance is to try and find a remedy for these realities. Our penance this year, though, is to make room for the holy. The biblical scholar John Berquist asks us to think about what we are growing in our life. Jeremiah connects the branch with righteousness. The righteousness here doesn't have much to do with purity. It's not like God lifts us up out of the muck and then keeps us all nice and clean. It's that we, together with God, get down on our hands and knees, right into the dirt and plant things that will grow like a righteous branch. Our lesson from Psalms this morning follows through with this idea of self-examination. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me to your truth. Teach it to me because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. I came across a lovely word play this week as I was thinking about the place where Jesus was born and the state of our hearts. The crux may be the word in and how many ends we use. Perhaps the problem is our little closed-in hearts need to make room at the inn of our hearts to house the holy. I'd like to bring to you a poem from John Vandelar called An Open Space. The calls are always there, God, to be more, have more, do more. Every corner of our lives needs to be filled with something. Every step, every word, every thought must be pregnant with meaning and purpose. We need to prevail, triumph, win the race, 
except no one ever wins. Not really. We run as fast as we can to stand still. And so many get left behind, broken, poor, depleted. Perhaps in this Advent waiting time, we can learn to let go, slow down, open up. Perhaps we can begin to clear away some of the clutter and open a space within us for silence, for stillness, for hope, for the holy. And maybe, just maybe, as we create this open space, we will find more room in our lives for generosity, for laughter, for connection, for caring, for love, for life. We will find room for the holy. Amen. As we find room for the holy during this season, we will continue to be nurtured by the gift of grace that God gives to everyone, no matter your age and no matter your background, no matter what your spiritual journey has been. You are welcome at the communion table in the United Methodist Church. All who, can, who want to participate may. God only asks that we would give our life, the, the part, broken parts of our life that we hold so tightly to, over to God so that God might be able to heal us. So I would invite you as we do a call and response um, time together to prepare your hearts for God's love to enter and flood in. Because of you, fulfiller of promises, we come to know the way to Bethlehem, where justice is born to a shunned family, where the riches of your love are born into poverty. Because of you, sign of our redemption, grace sprouts hope in the winter of our despair, goodness prevails over evil, and the streets of our cities, in, and in the streets of our cities, love transforms hate, even in the hardest of hearts. Because of you, calmer of our fears, we are taught to pray in the shadows of our worries and to trust that your peace is preferable um, to those easy prejudices sold on every corner. Because of you, God in community, holy in one, we will be led in this holy season to the place of hope and redemption. Let us begin this journey with reconciling with you with you and all whom you love. If only our hurtful words, our damaged, damaging actions, and our foolish choices would go away. But they don't. So we offer them up, as well as ourselves, to God for forgiveness and for our healing. Please join with me together as we pray. The chances we have to be more compassionate, the moments of offer hope to a lonely friend, the good fortune we could give to those who have so little, the moments to offer hope, oh, I, there we go. The signs are all around us, good and upright God, of how we fail to live as your people. Do not meditate on our bungling ways, God of steadfast love, but remember the mercy of your heart, the mercy which forgives us, that mercy which gives, makes us whole, and especially that living mercy who came down one night so long ago, Jesus, the advent of our redemption. Amen. Take a few moments to speak with God about the particular brokenness in your heart. And now let us hear and speak of the good news of our forgiveness. 
Raise your head, children of God. In the bleak midwinter of our lives, our redemption draws near. In this springtime of our doubts, the kingdom of God approaches. Even when we feel most alone, the one who comes to us is the salvation promised so long ago. Amen. It is good to know that we are forgiven. And so let us pray together, call in response, the, pra- the great prayer of thanksgiving. May the coming God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, people of God. Your redemption draws near. We will offer them to the one who leads us down paths of faithfulness. Join together in proclaiming thanksgiving to God, our righteousness. We praise the one for whom we wait this day and every day. The days of creation came, God of goodness, when you spoke on that first morning, calling forth budding flowers um, for every spring and warm breezes for summer days, tumbling leaves in the autumn and bright brittle stars on winter nights. You did all this and so much more so we might discover your ways but we chose to walk the paths paved with sin and death. Prophets came, speaking of your promises and calling us back to your truths, but we continued to reflect on the teachings of temptation. So you sent Jesus to us, your word which will never fade. And now with those hearts who are strong in holiness with those who long for justice for all people, we offer our songs of thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy are you, God, our righteousness. Because of you, all creation awaits your advent. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to us in weakness. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, God of our salvation, and your child is the bearer of justice. He set aside great glory to come incognito to us. Knowing our fears, he showed us how to trust you. Feeling our despair, he filled us with your overflowing hope. Experiencing our death, he went, on to the, he went into the grave so death might become a safe place for us and we would receive your redemption. As we set out on this Advent journey, as we seek to walk the way to Bethlehem, we remember that mystery we call faith. Remembering all the hardships we endured, praising you for the gift of new life in the resurrection, we tell of that mystery that is our faith. Christ died, the branch broken on the unjust tree. Christ was raised, declaring the Lord is my resurrection. Christ will return the advent of God's glory and the grace for all. Come now to your children gathered at this table. Pour out your spirit on the gifts of the bread and of the cup, O God. This is the bread which, though broken, strengthens us to stand up for justice and to face the bullies named terror and hate. This is the cup which overflows with grace so that we might transform our communities into safe places for all people, so we might see them as our siblings, those who the world would have us fear. And when we raise our heads to see our redemption draw near at the end of all time, we will join with our siblings in Christ, singing your praises forever and ever. God in community. 
holy and one, now and through all eternity. Amen. On the night that Christ gave himself up for us, knowing that he would endure a painful death on the cross because he had spoke of justice one time too many. Jesus took time to eat with his friends, the disciples, his friends who would betray him, his friends who would stick by him, his friends who would claim they never knew him, and those who would go on to tell the story to us. He ate a meal with them and thanked God for the bread, breaking it and saying to them, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the meal drew to a close, he thanked God for the fruit of the vine within the cup he'd picked up off the table, the one saved for Elijah when the Messiah came. And then he proclaimed to the disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant. It contains my whole life poured out for you, not a single drop withheld. Drink from this, all of you. Do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the mighty acts in which God gives birth to the church and offers salvation to all, we eat broken bread, desiring to be made whole by God. And we drink from the cup of salvation, knowing that God offers us health and wholeness and eternal life. Amen. I invite you, my friends who are at home, I hope you have gathered a bit of bread and a bit of juice that as David and I share in our elements together, you too will share. And those who are here, know that you can slip down your mask for a moment, um, pop that uh, bit of bread into your mouth, and savor that bit of juice, for they are truly um, the body broken for you, and they truly represent God's wholeness of salvation offered freely to you. The body of Christ broken that you might be made whole, and the cup of salvation poured out freely to you, David. Amen. Ruth, the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of salvation poured out for you. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, it was a rough trip. I know today's worship has been a little bit rough, but I hope it is um, a time to reflect on the road that is before us. That may be a bit rough and stony, but Christ will come along with us. And so I would invite you to um, take a few moments to reflect on what you have seen and heard and the call that I hope God has placed in your heart today.
David, before I um, invite you to come and speak a uh, benediction prayer for us, um, I want to remind folks um, that uh, a couple of things. Um, first of all, at about 11.30, because I have to have time to kind of restage things, um, we'll be beginning our Advent study um, for coffee hour in the parlor. So um, I think some place I set my book, and by golly, I cannot find it. Um, but it is a really awesome book called um, An Advent Book of Days, um, and it was up on the announcements that uh, were at the beginning of worship. Um, we'll also be doing the study on Zoom, so Logan, I'm going to need you to make sure that the Zoom link that we used for Coffee Hour um, a few months ago uh, gets posted for everybody so that they'll be able to um, pick that up. Um, so there'll be a, a Zoom link up on the Facebook page, um, or I would invite you to come and join us in person for Advent uh, study this year um, for Coffee Hour. And as we prepare our hearts and homes um, and places that we live for Christmas, um, sometimes we have special uh, decorations that we take out. If you would be willing to share a special decoration with um, the worshiping body of Christ here at Trinity, we've got room on the back counter um, for a few of the, for many of those decorations, and I'd be grateful for perhaps a little story about why this decoration is uh, special in your heart and mind, um, and why and where it has traveled from. So, um, Advent study and Christmas decorations. Um, I would invite you, my friends, to know that whether you are at home, whether you are here in the pews, it has been lovely to be able to worship with you. And David, would you come and offer us a final blessing? May God's door of welcome swing open in your heart and in your life. May Christ's humble first dwelling remind you of the plenty you already know. And may the Spirit lead you into more possibility and hospitality than you can imagine, making room in the inn for all. May it be so for you, may it be so for us, may it be so for this church. Amen. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us, my friends. I'm looking forward to seeing you for Advent study in a few minutes. Oh, 